Welcome to WPZ Cart. In this video tutorial, we're going to walk through how to work with our shipping zones that EasyCart uses across all of its shipping systems. And shipping zones is one of the most confusing, kind of difficult aspects to set up. And so hopefully we can make a video here that kind of clarifies how a shipping zone works, some of the pitfalls you might run into when you try to engage shipping zones, and some of the do's and don'ts within uh, shipping zones. Uh, we know a lot of people um, have uh, rates that you want to apply to specific areas, and we've seen a lot of customers of ours also try to limit shipping uh, to specific areas. And so I'll show you how to do both of those within our system. So let's take a look here. We just have a basic demo store running, and I've got basic shipping rates. And if I start to go through checkout, um, all I have here is basic United States address. Nothing fancy. It's in Oregon. I'm just going to go ahead and go to continue shipping. And what we have is basically four static rates. And so what I teach you here is going to work across all of your other systems. Just need to apply the same theory to it. And so let's look at our shipping so that we can get kind of a base of what we have going on here. So I'm going to go to shipping rates. And again, what we teach here will work across static. All of our price triggers have it. Uh, you'll notice all of them have this shipping zone section. Uh, even our live rates have shipping zones. And so if you open up each individual rate, you can have shipping zones. And there's a big no-no here with a lot of these that I'll try to teach and how they work and why you can run into trouble. So let's keep it simple though with just static rates. And I have shipping zones here. If you use this, you might look at this and say, oh, well, these are the zones. I just want to ship to the lower 48. I'm going to go ahead and select lower 48. And that is certainly uh, the wrong way to go about it. Uh, shipping zones are meant to be a post address filter. So me having them set as no zone and going through and entering my billing address and shipping address, these rates will show because it doesn't find any match to those zones. So these are what you can consider with no zone, your default rates. So if I change one of these, for example, to Alaska and Hawaii, this rate now will only show to those users. It won't show to anybody else. Okay, so if I wanted to have another priority second day, and I want that to show for everybody, then I would need to have it set to no zone. And maybe this priority you want set to uh, 1499. And I can set this order to show up after this one, but let me show you what I mean. I basically have the exact same shipping here. This one will show for everybody except for after they go through checkout and we see their billing and shipping address, then it will show me the other rate. So for example, let me save these. Okay. So priority two day air, if I come back and refresh my shipping. Okay, priority two day shipping is fourteen ninety nine. Okay, I do not see this nineteen ninety nine because my address was in Oregon. Now if I go back to my address, let's say we flip to uh, Alaska. it's going to find the 1999 one okay and it's also going to see the 1499 because it's a no zone so they match this everybody matches this so this is a situation where if you're going to have a rate like this you're going to need to apply it specifically to everywhere if you want it to work correctly or else you'll see these situations just realize that these are very specific. They only show up if the address matches. And so this can run into a lot of issues where people set up uh, price triggers, for example, and they go through and set these all to, you know, lower 48. They only want these 
they only want to ship to the lower 48 in the United States. Well, if anybody orders from Alaska or Hawaii, they are going to get free shipping because none of these match. Uh, somebody from Europe could order or Australia because the zones never match. So you would have to go through and set up an entire full set of price triggers, one for every location across the globe, or have a no zone set up as a fallback so people see that. So these can add a lot of confusion when people start setting up sorry let me flip back here to static shipping they can add a lot of confusion when people start adding shipping zones um, and not really realizing what they do they're not meant to limit shipping in any way uh, if you want to limit let's say you do want to just ship to the lower 48 um, or you know just to Europe or wherever your country is maybe just Australia or US and Canada what you want to do is limit the countries that a user can actually check out with and we give you an easy way to do that. You just come in here and you go to either your shipping settings, and these are your countries, these are your states, and you can see if they're enabled or not. And you can come in here and just easily turn these on and off. Okay? Or you can come over here on the left and you can go to countries, and you can select all the countries, maybe except for United States and Canada and you can disable or enable countries okay and you've got 219 countries so here's an easy way if you want to have all the countries turned off just come in here let's show all 250 countries let's just select them all except for United States and Canada and maybe Australia and I'm just going to go ahead and disable those countries so limiting shipping this is how you do it don't use shipping zones okay uh, you do want to leave them and you can see here that these are enabled these three and everything else is disabled if we go to our shopping cart now you've now just turned off those features so really nobody else can order from you uh, and so that's a good way to do it not through shipping zones themselves okay so let me go ahead and go back here and let me choose uh, let me choose maybe Oregon again Okay, and we're on our shipping we see the four methods and that is because of our uh, rates that we have set up here uh, and this will only show up if Alaska and Hawaii selected it okay so that's uh, the shipping zone piece now let's go to shipping settings if you want to create your own zones uh, and I know a lot of people want to do this when they do dive into this we have a section here for managing your zones and your zone items and so think of this as these are pre-made we just set these up uh, for you uh, but you can certainly create your your own maybe you have a special one called the green shipping zone it doesn't matter what you call these they're just names what matters is what goes into them and so I've got this green shipping zone now we come down here to zone items and this is where uh, you know it's a good idea if you want to show more rows Okay, North America, South America, you can see we've added some of these and you can add countries and states to them. There's Europe, there's Africa. So the green zone isn't going to apply to anybody because I haven't set it up yet. So I need to go in here and do green zone and maybe green zone is United States and maybe that is Alaska and I'll add them and maybe it is also Hawaii so I'm gonna go green zone uh, United States and I'm gonna add Hawaii okay and we should see that in here there's green zones and so now my my zone actually has a couple of countries and states and again, if you're using any of our defaults, it might be good to go through and actually give your zones a quick run through just to make sure they are set up correctly. Okay, we could have missed a country here and there, especially um, in places that we're not really familiar with. Uh, but that gives you a custom zone, and you can come back to your rates now, and you can set that up uh, just for your needs. Um, you can
and set up and select green zone and that now will only apply to those uh, cities and countries so uh, that's how zones work um, if you jump to live shipping uh, this is one area too where a lot of people have tried to add shipping zones to live rates and there really is no reason to ever do that because the the APIs from USPS to FedEx they're only going to return rates if they're available in those areas so you trying to limit what the live shipping rates are doing can get really really tricky so uh, I always leave live rates to no zone uh, unless there's a very very specific need that you have for them so you know be careful here uh, you can certainly use them with our price triggers just realize if you're gonna set up price triggers you need a whole set of all your triggers you're building basically a table for every single uh, shipping zone if you start going that route and if you use static methods um, same thing just realize they're only going to apply if they find a match um, and you can have all these no zones which show to everybody is what they are so that's how shipping zones work pretty configurable pretty powerful feature but it can get you into a lot of trouble too so uh, be aware of that and test as much as you can so if you do have a, a question about maybe some of our other shipping methods uh, how to do live rates table rates or static rates uh, we have videos on all three of those major methods so be sure to check those out on how to set them up and we'll check out in those videos thanks